Good Wednesday morning. Welcome to Begin in the Word. We are now to the number three in our list of top five most misused Bible verses. We started out by looking at Romans 8, 28, and then yesterday, Philippians 4, 13. And today we are looking at Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, a famous verse you no doubt have heard where Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. And this verse has provided the gut punch to many sermons as it as they come to a conclusion and the invitation is offered and the, the scene of Jesus standing at the door of the heart is, is painted. And does this verse mean that Jesus is standing at the door of the heart pleading with the individual sinner to let him in so that they might find salvation and have this personal relationship with Jesus? And again, like so, like the, the, the verses we've looked at already this week, this is not to say that this is not a true thing that the Bible teaches. Jesus does plead with sinners to come to him in repentance and faith and find salvation, and indeed to have a direct relationship with him, with God through him. That is a very true and biblical thing. But is that what Revelation 3.20 is painting? Is that the picture it paints? of Jesus standing at the, the heart of the individual sinner, pleading with them to let him in? And the answer is simply no. That is not the context, and that is not the primary meaning of Revelation 3.20. We're going to take a step back and look at the context. This occurs in the final letter to the seven churches contained in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, and this in particular is written to the church in Laodicea. And in if you know this text, you know that the words that Jesus has to say to this to this church, they're very severe. They're very harsh. This is a church that's got a lot going on wrong, and they need to repent. And the Bible says, I know your works in verse 15. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. Jesus says, I've had enough. You say you're rich. You say you've prospered. You say you need nothing. You don't realize that you're wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. This is a church that has a lot of needs. And yet, when they consider themselves, when they self-evaluate, when they examine their own condition, they think they need nothing. They think they have prospered. They think they are rich. They don't see a spiritual need in their life. And so in verse 18, Jesus counsels the church. Remember who he's writing to, the church in Laodicea. He counsels the church to buy gold from me, refined in the fire, so that you may be rich. White garments, so that you may clothe yourselves, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen. Salve to anoint your eyes, that you may see. And he says in verse 19, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Now, this is a very critical verse and a very important concept that runs all throughout Scripture. That God loves his children, and like a loving father, he reproves and disciplines them. And the purpose of the letters to the seven churches when Jesus is speaking negatively and critically of these churches, it's not done out of hatred. It's not done out of an attitude of dispassionate criticism. Jesus does this because he loves them. And he says, because I love you, I reprove and discipline you. So if the church at Laodicea got this letter and they took it personally and they they to tuned out what Jesus had to say. They didn't want to hear it. It's too critical. It's too mean. If they just blocked it out, they're missing the point because Jesus tells them this truth, not because he doesn't love them, but precisely because he does. So he says, be zealous and repent. And in the context of this rebuke and call to repentance of this church, remember this church, Jesus says this in verse 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus wants to have a relationship with this church. Now, does Jesus want to have a relationship with individual sinners? You bet he does. But this verse, Revelation 3 and 20, comes primarily in a context of rebuke and discipline of Christians who have grown far away from Jesus, who have grown lukewarm who think they don't have any spiritual need, but inside they're rotten to the core. And Jesus says, I'm knocking. It's not that I'm knocking at the heart of some uh, unbelieving sinner. 
though that there's certain truth to that concept in the rest of scripture. He says, I'm knocking at the door of a church that has grown far from me. And the reason this is so important today is because churches today can easily be like the church in Laodicea. Christians today can be like the church in Laodicea and not perceive that we have a spiritual need. But Jesus says we're wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. And he is knocking at the door of our church, asking to be brought in, asking us to let him in. And so what does Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 actually say? Well, it tells us that some Christians turn Jesus away through their lukewarm behavior. And if we ever use this verse and find comfort that, well, Jesus is talking to those outside, to the unbelievers that that need to join the kingdom community, but he's not really talking to us, we're missing the point. Because the invitation to invite Jesus inside and to, to eat and share this meal and this relationship with him. This is given in this context, not to unbelievers, but to believers who have grown far away from Jesus. And so the, Revelation 3.20 is telling us some Christians turn away from Jesus, but Jesus is standing at the door of the church knocking, asking to be let in. And of course, when we say Jesus stands at the door of the church, we don't mean the church building. We mean to the people of God themselves. It's exciting to me as I look at the, those who watch the Begin in the Word videos. They come from all over the place. Uh, we're based out of Oklahoma City, but we get, we get listeners and viewers from all around the country and, and perhaps even from other parts of the world. And so I don't know what type of audience we appeal to on, on a day-to-day -day basis as we post these videos. I suspect there are some Christians who, if they look at themselves, know that they're growing far away from Jesus, that they're lukewarm that on the surface it looks like they've got it all figured out, but it doesn't take too much digging underneath that surface to see that they're wretched, poor, and naked. They don't have the type of relationship with Jesus that they need to have. And so Revelation 3.20 is written to Christians like you. Christians who, who started that walk with Christ, but something has come along, the cares of the world ha has separated them from Christ, and Christ wants that relationship reestablished. And so I'm encouraging you as a listener to, this, to these video series, if that's you, let Jesus in. He stands at the door and he knocks. Maybe you attend a church where you detect by your reading and study of scripture that they have turned away from Christ. Maybe they don't teach the gospel like they should. Maybe they don't stand firm on the truth of God's word or they're wishy-washy as it relates to the truth of scripture. And you detect that this is a church that Jesus is not welcome in. It's for churches like that that Jesus is knocking, saying, let me in. And so I hope this verse is an encouragement to you to repent and return to Jesus. And the reward, he says, to the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. These verses, while they may have application to those outside, they certainly have direct applica application to the Christians inside who need the constant message, the constant reminder that Jesus is there wanting to come in. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's my hope that just as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.